My name is Peter Thomas, President of Resource Compliance. In this short video, we'll provide instructions for completing an annual compressor inspection using the checklists from Appendix B of IIAR Standard 6. The checklists contained in IIAR 6 Appendix B are derived from a legacy document named IIAR Bulletin 109. For years, the Bulletin 109 checklists, or B109s, served as the gold standard for documenting annual mechanical integrity inspections for ammonia refrigeration equipment. In 2019, IIAR retired Bulletin 109 when the first edition of Standard 6 was published. Standard 6 addresses the minimum requirements for inspection, testing, and maintenance of ammonia refrigeration systems and includes slightly altered versions of the B109s in Appendix B. The checklists are typically two pages. The first page contains contact and equipment information, and the second page has the inspection checklist. While all the information on the second page will change year to year with the equipment inspection, much of the information on the first page should stay the same. For this reason, you may only have to fill out the first page for each piece of equipment once. For subsequent years, you should only have to fill out the second page. The simplest part of completing a compressor checklist is filling out the contact information. Each IIAR6 checklist requires the inspector to indicate the location, owner, and physical address of the system. The contact's name and phone number should be the facility representative responsible for ensuring the inspection is completed. Additionally, the inspector must write his or her own name and the date of the inspection. The ID or tag number belongs in the upper right corner and can typically be found on the equipment label or PNID. Next, the inspector should indicate on the inspection checklist the application of the compressor. This compressor is a high stage compressor, so the appropriate box should be checked. The type of compressor must also be indicated by checking the appropriate box. In this video, we will provide examples of inspecting both reciprocating and rotary screw compressors. The category of oil cooling and cooling medium are the next sections on the checklist. This reciprocating compressor is water cooled so the other and water boxes would be checked. This screw compressor is also water-cooled, but uses a shell and tube oil cooler, so shell and tube and water boxes would be checked. Much of the information requested in this section, titled Equipment Data and Limits, can be obtained from the compressor's nameplate and manufacturer specifications. The maximum speed for the Vilter reciprocating compressor was able to be obtained from the manufacturer literature. In the section titled Operating Data, this information will vary from compressor to compressor and will require operator input or design information about the system. This recip compressor is belt driven. The operating speed is 1200 RPM, the direction of rotation is clockwise, and there is no flow direction arrow installed. Essentially, all screw compressors are direct drive at 3600 RPM. This screw compressor has a distinct arrow indicating the correct rotational direction. The design saturated suction pressure is 33.5 PSIG, which corresponds to 20 degrees Fahrenheit, and the design discharge pressure is 166 PSIG at a condensing temperature of 90 degrees Fahrenheit. The next section is named Relief Valve Data. The reciprocating compressor is protected from overpressurization using an internal safety valve, so that should be indicated and the other fields in this section are not applicable. For the screw compressor, information such as the manufacturer, model, pressure setting, and capacity can be obtained from the Relief Valve nameplate. No. If your facility reprints the same completed first page for each checklist, this is one data point on the first page that can change. Be sure to check if the relief valve installed matches what is listed on the form. The relief valves on this compressor are external to the equipment and terminate to the atmosphere, so this configuration is categorized as external. The information required in the next section titled Motor Data can be gathered from the motor's nameplate. 
belt quantity and belt size are only applicable for belt-driven machines, so NA can be entered for direct drive compressors. The final information required on the first page of the inspection checklist pertains to the compressor's safety cutouts. This information can be obtained from the electromechanical pen switches on the reciprocating compressor or from the screw compressor microprocessor. Not all compressors will have this entire list of alarms and cutouts, but at minimum each compressor must have a low suction pressure, high discharge pressure, and low oil pressure cutout. The second page of the inspection checklist contains 20 questions that should be answered yes, no, or not applicable. The wording of each question is such that a yes answer is always positive and a no answer indicates a deficiency. Some questions may not be applicable to a particular compressor and should be answered NA. Item A asks if the equipment is labeled and has a legible nameplate. A proper label consists of the component name and ID number. Items B and C ask if the compressor is suitable for ammonia and operating within limits. Suitability for ammonia can be verified by the equipment specifications provided by the manufacturer. A compressor has many operating limits that should be observed. Some of the more noteworthy operating limits are suction pressure, discharge pressure, oil pressure, and oil level. The pressures can be monitored from analog gauges or microprocessors. Suction pressures can vary greatly depending on operating conditions. The inspector should consult with facility personnel to determine the normal suction pressure ranges. The discharge pressure for a high stage compressor is typically between 120 and 180 PSIG. This compressor is operating at 140 PSIG, which is acceptable. All compressors have oil level sight glasses to verify if the oil level is within range. On a reciprocating compressor, there is a single sight glass on the crankcase that should be half full. Screw compressors will typically have three sight glasses. Two are on the upstream side of the coalescer. The bottom glass should be full, while the top glass will vary from empty to half full. The third glass is downstream of the coalescer and should always be empty. Item D requires the inspector to verify that supports and anchorage are adequate. The anchorage should be inspected to ensure nuts are tight and free from corrosion. The compressor should have safe access for normal service and maintenance. This screw compressor is compliant in that regard. The inspector must do a visual inspection of the entire compressor to verify the equipment is free from excessive ice buildup, vibration, and leaks. Where possible, the compressor should be inspected from all sides to avoid missing a deficiency. Item F asks specifically about ice buildup. Suction pipe insulation must be thoroughly inspected for damage. Any ice or moisture on the exterior of the insulation must be recorded. Frost or ice buildup on the crankcase or oil separator would indicate a failed oil heater and must be addressed. A compressor in this condition must be locked out until necessary repairs can be made. This suction pipe insulation is not properly sealed, so a deficiency should be noted. Item H asks specifically about leaks. Compressors are typically located inside machinery rooms which are required to be equipped with detectors and alarms. Item I inquires if the pipes are marked as required by IIAR Standard 2. Standard 2 requires piping mains, headers, and branches to be labeled with the following. The word ammonia should be printed in black letters. The physical state abbreviation, LIQ or VAP. The relative pressure, high or low an arrow depicting the direction of flow in the pipe, a service abbreviation indicating the purpose of the pipe. This compressor has an orange label on the high stage discharge pipe and a yellow label on the suction. Furthermore, the suction pipe abbreviation is simply S. 
IIAR Standard 2 Appendix Q recommends that the pipe service abbreviation be HSS for this application. Items J and K pertain to valves associated with the compressor. All valves should be visually inspected. Deficiencies that should be recorded include corroded or painted stems, missing hand wheels, damaged seal caps, or excessive valve body corrosion. This valve has moderate external corrosion and the valve stem has noticeable dirt buildup, both of which should be recorded as findings. The compressors must have sufficient instrumentation for monitoring the operating conditions per item L in the checklist. Compressors must have analog gauges or microprocessors to observe the operating parameters. Item M pertains to the drivetrain associated with the compressor. It is important to check that the rotating shaft is properly guarded to protect employees from injury. The belts and sheaves on the belt drive compressors should be inspected for deficiencies. The excessive dirt on and around the screw compressor shaft must be cleaned up. Item N asks if the compressors are free from any modifications, alterations, damage, or repairs. While this cannot be conclusively answered without the original compressor drawings, the inspector can still look for indications that alterations have occurred. If there is evidence of equipment modifications, the appropriate checkbox in item O must be answered. Item P asks if the compressors at minimum have suction and discharge stop valves and a discharge check valve. Most compressors come equipped with these valves from the manufacturer, so it is unusual for these valves to be lacking. However, the discharge isolation valve on this compressor is not located near the unit and requires climbing a ladder to the roof in order to access the valve, which is not ideal. Item Q inquires if the safety cutouts are functioning properly. These can be tested during the inspection or documentation of the test can be reviewed to allow the questions to be answered. Item R builds on the previous question by asking if at a minimum the high pressure, low pressure, and differential oil pressure control devices are present and functioning adequately. While many compressors have numerous cutouts, these are often deemed most important, hence a question specifically about them. The second page of the inspection checklist concludes with items S and T. Item S requires the entire surface of the compressor to be inspected and any surface corrosion or pitting must be recorded as a deficiency. If a deficiency is noted, an additional check mark is required for whether there is slight pitting or damage, or extensive pitting or damage. This reciprocating compressor has moderate corrosion and dirt on the exterior that requires corrective measures. Item T, which serves as a catch-all for other concerns that the inspector may have observed. The area below can be used to write a description of the deficiencies. On this compressor, there are exposed wires on the jacket water solenoid valve and two of the pen switch covers are missing. The screw compressor has noticeable oil on the ground that must be cleaned up. Furthermore, these paw prints are an indication that an animal has been inside the machinery room, which must be corrected. This concludes the IIAR6 Appendix B Annual Inspection Checklist for Compressors. I trust you found this information useful. We have more videos on our channel about ammonia refrigeration and process safety management. Feel free to check them out if you're interested.